Hello, this is Gary Entz, and in this lesson, I am going to give you the lowdown on how I make a works cited page, an MLA works cited page. I'm old school about it. I don't use a citation generator. Citation generators can cause a lot of problems. So I'm going to show you how to do this all manually. So follow along. I'm going to give you some uh, plenty of examples. Here uh, in a previous lesson, I showed you how to set up your MLA style paper. It's a general setup with header, class information, centering your title, everything is double spaced, one inch margins. If you don't know any of that, uh, I recommend doing the previous lesson before we continue because I showed you how to make hanging indents for your works cited page and also how to create a page break. So make sure you do the previous lessons before we continue. Okay, that said, I'm gonna assume you know how to set up your MLA style paper in general now, and we'll get down to the works cited page. I'm gonna scroll down to the end here of this text, and here's my process I wanted to show you. First thing I do, I name the kind of source that I'm using. Is it a book? Is it an essay in an anthology, a print anthology? Is it a, is it a database source, electronic? Is it an ebook? Those are the kinds of things uh, you need to know in order to cite it, in order to list it correctly on your works cited page. Next, once I know what kind of source I'm using, I find the model for that kind of listing source on OWL Purdue MLA. And I copy paste that model into my works cited page for reference. I'm going to delete it later, but I like to see it right there so that I know what I'm doing. Then I locate uh, <clears throat> a preformed MLA listing in an actual source if available. And for instance, in database sources, you can find it under citations. You can find how to do it in MLA and you can copy paste that into the works cited page. Sometimes there are errors in those, so you can't just copy paste and call it good. So I fix it up if necessary, comparing it to the model. Then I delete all of the models and I check formatting and alphabetization and that usually does it for me. So if that sounds fuzzy, I'll show you what I mean right now. So let's go down to my works cited as it's developing. Obviously I've got the words works cited up above <clears throat> in Times New Roman centered. So my first kind of source is going to be an article from an online database. And here it is. It's called Monsters and the Moral Imagination by Stephen T. Asma. It was, the source was first Chronicle of Higher Education in, uh, and it's the volume 56 issue. All of that is important. Okay. So there it is, Monsters and the Moral Imagination. This is uh, an article from an online database. So what I do is I go to, to Owl Purdue MLA, and this is an online handbook I recommend. Online Writing Lab is Owl. So if you scroll down here a little bit, you'll see a lot of options over here on the left side, and I've gone to MLA Works Cited electronic sources, that's the page I'm on. And when you scroll down, you will see what I'm looking for, an article from an online database or other electronic subscription service. So here's how to do it. And then they've got some examples and I hone in on the examples. So I'm gonna take one example here, like this one. I'm gonna copy. I'm going to go back to my works cited and I'm going to just paste it in there. There it is. I've already got it set up with hanging indent. As you see, uh, the first line is flush with the left margin and every subsequent line is indented. Okay, I've already done that and we went over that in a previous lesson. Make sure you use true hanging indents. So there's my sample. I'm actually going to make it red so I know I'm going to delete it later. Okay. Now let's go back to the actual source, Monsters and the Moral Imagination. This database has this great column on the left hand side, on the right hand side over here. And if you look at these options, you'll see the word cite. Click on that. 
and you'll see citation format come up. Look at the note at the top. Review the instructions and make any necessary corrections before using. Even the database is saying there may be errors in the way we've done this. So we have to check and make sure and not just copy paste and call it good. Look at this, I scrolled down to MLA, works cited, and here it is. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab this, I'm gonna copy it, I go back to my Google Doc, and I'm gonna paste it right in here. Okay, now I can compare it. Last name, comma, first name, period. That's right, okay. In quotation marks is the title of the essay, and I've got that right here, that's correct. Then comes uh, the, the original place of publication, and I've got that right here, Chronicle of Higher Education, all of the volume and edition information right here, and they've got that. This is all looking good, okay. Then comes the date up here, and I've got the date right here. Excellent. Okay, then they've got PP for paid, PP period for pages. Here, this was only one page, so they just have a P period, B11. That's fine, followed by a period, and then comes the database name, database name with a comma, and then they have uh, either the DOI or a URL. So I've got the URL right here, followed by a period, but look at this, Th on the sample, they've got an access data, date of access, and I don't. So if I didn't check this, I would miss that. So I'm gonna put accessed and today's date, uh, 19 December, DEC period 2019, followed by a period. Okay, I've got that one set up. That looks pretty good. It's looking just like the model. So we can move on now to, let's do another database source. I've got this one. This is in Gale and Context, uh, Posing Viewpoints. Why Vampires Never Die. Here are the authors right here, Guillermo del Toro and Chuck Hogan. This was originally from the New York Times, uh, volume 158. Okay. Two, uh, 2009, all right, let's look for a uh, site button up here in the right. I'm gonna click site, let's see what happens. Great, they've got a pop-up. It's already set on MLA 8th edition, there it is. Let's grab that, actually hit a select button here. I'm gonna copy it, go back to my Google Doc and paste it. How does that look? This is looking Good, there's the database, it's in italics the way it's supposed to be. Uh, the original publication is in italics the way it's supposed to be. The uh, title of the essay is in quotation marks the way it's supposed to be. Totoro is the first name, comma. Okay, this is all looking good. Look, they automatically put the date of access in for me. So this is looking great, all right. I wouldn't have known that though if I hadn't looked at the original. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is uh, move on to another style, then we'll go back and clean this up. What I wanna do next is an ebook. So what I've got here, I've got a chapter in an ebook. I'm gonna, I'm going to treat it as an essay. It's called Alexander Fights Monsters in India and uh, the book it's found in is On Monsters, An Unnatural History of Our Worst Fears by Stephen T. Asma, 2009. Okay, publisher permissions. Okay, so I'm gonna look for that button that is helpful to me, site, right there. See what happens. Hopefully something comes up. Nothing's happening, let's see. I'm gonna see if I can open this uh, once again so that we can see if that's the problem. Yeah, let me go back just a moment. If I open it up again, maybe it will work for me.
Thank you for your patience. This is live, by the way. Looks like it's loading. There it is. OK. Let's try the site button again and see if it works. Cross your fingers. There it is. OK, so here's the citation format. I'm going to scroll down and find MLA. There it is, asthma. I'm going to take that. And I'm going to go back to my works cited page. Oh, I forgot to put my model in, so I'm going to leave space for that. I'm going to put that there. Now I'm going to go back to Owl Purdue MLA. And I'm on uh, that same page, and there is an ebook example. And here it is. I'm going to take that example. I'm going to put it above. Make sure I make it red so I know to remove it later. Now I get to compare it. Last name, comma, first name, and middle initial period, and then the book title in italics, and then it's an ebook. Okay, so you say ebook, comma, and then who puts out the ebook? That's the publisher, comma, 2007 date period. So I've got asthma, comma, Stephen T. Okay, and the title of the book with a period. Uh, I don't have what it is. Uh, the medium type is an ebook. So I'm going to put in here ebook, comma. Now they've got uh, the publisher, and I've got the publisher, comma, and then uh, the date period. Now they've got something additional because this is an ebook in a database. So it's called EBSCO host, comma, and then they've got uh, the uh, URL. So some of these gray areas you have to navigate. If it is a database source, you should modify it a little bit to make sure you're treating it as a database source. Up above here, we had accessed, right, the date of access. So I'm going to also add that since this ebook is also a date database book, uh, accessed December 19th, 19 December. Okay. Another thing, Look, there is an extra space there. You want to edit. And here, I said before that I was going to treat the chapter as, uh, as, as an essay, and it's called Alexander Fights Monsters in India. So I want to point that out. So I'll go back here, and I'm going to add that here. Alexander fights, what was it? Monsters in India. Monsters in India, period. End of quotation mark. I've just noticed that uh, Google is using uh, opening and closing quotation marks but my copy pasting from online doesn't. I'm gonna to wanna to go back and change those to make sure I am uh, being consistent. Okay, I think I've got that one down. It's a combination ebook slash database source. You have to think on your feet sometimes when you're uh, using your works cited page. Let's do another, uh, let's do another ebook. This one is purely online. This is uh, in Project Gutenberg. It is Dracula by Bram Stoker. So uh, New York, Gross Dunlap Publishers, 1897. But I'm going to want the actual ebook information. Here's the title, Dracula, Bram Stoker, release date. That's going to be important. And it's Project Gutenberg. I'm going to take all of this and we'll deal with it on the works cited page. Put it right here. Close all of this. Okay, first things first, I need to make it look like this. Okay, so I'm going to start with 
Bram Stoker. Let's start right here. Stoker, comma, Brahm. Period. The title name. Its title is Dracula. Okay. And there's a period. This is an ebook. Comma. And then comes the publisher. This is Project Gutenberg. So I put Project Gutenberg. Gutenberg. Okay, Gutenberg. I'm going to grab the URL because I'll need that as well. Project Gutenberg. I'm going to do it like this. Ebook, Project Gutenberg here. The year is 2013. Okay, comma, 2013. And then here, period. Okay, I'm going to provide the URL for my readers as well. That, let's see, that's going onto a different line because it needs to, and that's fine. Okay, uh, the URL, viewpoints. Uh, there's a comma before the URL up here and here and also here. So I'm going to be consistent here, have a comma. Here, there we go. I'm going to also provide the data access as well. So after the URL, there's a period and a date of access. Accessed 19 December 2019, period. Okay, all right, those are ebooks. Let's move on to, let's get rid of that. Let's delete this out of the way. Another type of source you might find using quite a bit is a page on a website, and I found one here. This is uh, the Hardy Society, all about Thomas Hardy. And here's a page on their, on their website. It's entitled Life of Thomas Hardy. And it was, if you go down to the bottom, it was, uh, it's written by Tony Fincham in 2019. All of that is gonna be important as well as uh, the name of the website, the Thomas Hardy Society, as well as probably the URL. So let's figure out how to do this. Let's go back to Owl Purdue MLA. I'm still on the electronic sources. And here I've found a page on a website. So I'm going to grab this sample and take it over to my works cited page. Copy it in. Make it red so I remember to delete it. There we go. So that's what it should look like. Okay, so if I go over here, scroll down to the bottom, I've got the author. I'm going to grab that as well as the date. Might as well take that too while I'm there. I'm gonna paste that in. But last name first, Fincham Tony, period. Okay, what comes next? Then comes the title. And it was about, oh, Life of Thomas Hardy, all right? Life of Thomas Hardy, and then there's a period, end of the quote. Now comes the name of the website, and here, this is the Thomas Hardy Society, okay? This is in italics, too. It's like a containing, uh, a containing source, the Thomas Hardy Society, and my italics. Then there's a comma and a URL. So I'm gonna go back here and grab the URL, go back, put that in here, followed by a period, and a 
If your URLs activate, that's fine. I just, my others weren't, so I'm not activating these. Okay, then there is uh, the access date. Accessed 19 December 2019 period. Okay, now what I don't see is when it was printed. And so I'm going to want to put that in too. I don't like that that's missing. Uh, if you look up here, we've got uh, short work followed by the containing work with a comma and then the date that it was printed. So after the containing work is where I'd like to put it, right here. And it is, uh, let's see, March 2nd, so 2 March 2019, comma, I believe, was it a comma? I look at the other uh, items as well. Comma, if there were pages, I think that looks pretty good. I think it's a period. I'm navigating this as I go. So you have to use your intuition sometimes. Make it work as best as it can. Okay, so there we go. I've got a page on a website. Best as I can make it. That looks pretty good. Okay. Period accessed. Yeah, okay. And lastly, what if you've got a print source? So I've got my book called Monsters, a Bedford Spotlight Reader. And in here, I'm going to want to, uh, I've quoted, uh, fear of the monster is really a kind of desire by Jeffrey Jerome Cohen. So I need to set this up as a work in an anthology. So I'm going to go to, let's see if I can find it. Yeah, here we go. A work in an anthology reference or collection. And I've gone to a different page in Owl Purdue MLA. Over here in the left, I've gone to here, MLA Works Cited Page, Books. And if you scroll down, you find a work in an anthology reference or collection. And here's how you're supposed to do it. And here's an example. I'm going to grab this one. Bring it back over here, paste it in, make it red, so I know to delete it. I'm going to make mine look just like that. So Cohen is his last name, comma, Jeffrey Jerome. I need a period. Then I have the title of the actual essay, Fear of the Monster is really a kind of desire, a period inside the quote, then comes the containing work, and it is the book, Monsters, a Bedford Spotlight Reader. Then, since I have an editor coming up, I've got, I should have a comma, and then edited by, and the editor for our book is Andrew J. Hoffman. Okay, then there's a comma, and uh, Heinemann here is the publisher. We've got Bedford St. Martins, so I'll put that right there, Bedford slash St. Martin's without any spaces before and after the slash. And then comes a comma and the, the year of publication, 2016, followed by a comma and the page, uh, page numbers. PP period is uh, the abbreviation for pages. If it were just one page, again, it would just be a P period, 190 to 195. Here, We've got end punctuation. I always have to remember to put that end punctuation in. I see a lot of uh, missing punctuation on works cited pages. So make sure and check throughout. All right, so we're cooking here. What I'm gonna do now is strip out all of the red information and see what we're left with. There's gonna be another step before we finish. Strip out all of that red. Go here. There we go. Now we're left with all of the citations. Now you have to remember the works cited page needs to be alphabetized. So there's an A, a D. Uh, this A has to come up. 
It's asthma too. So this one starts with M, this one starts with A. So this one is gonna be first. I'm going to cut and paste there. Asthma, asthma, D, S, there's a C down here. I'm gonna grab the C, cut it, and put it right here after the A's. Then comes the D for Del Toro, the S for Stoker, the F needs to move. Let's get that where it belongs. Close that up. D right here. There we go. Okay, this is looking good. I'll show you very quickly uh, if you don't recall how to make these hanging indents. If you don't see the proper hanging indents, do not try and do this with the tab button and the enter button. You're just gonna create a lot of formatting grief. What you need to do is make sure you've selected everything that you're going to change to hanging indent. You go up to, uh, I believe, format, align and indent, and then go down to indentation options. Now you'll see here, special indent, that should say hanging five, okay? Uh, mine is already hanging indent, so it wasn't allowing me to change it. But select, again, format, align and indent, indentation options, special hanging, make sure this says 0.5, uh, and that is the 0.5 of an inch, that's uh, every subsequent line will be indented a half inch. Once you click apply, then you should see the hanging indents as you see here. All right, uh, the last thing I would do was check over all of this again, make sure that all of your periods, everything is in the right place, and that you've got end punctuation at the end of each one. Uh, another frequent error I see in a lot of these citations is this things are smushed together. Things are just don't have spaces between them. So lack of punctuation uh, and lack of spacing. And lastly, here's another thing that I see all the time. Titles aren't marked correctly. Remember, the actual piece that you're citing, if it's a short work, like an essay or a poem or a short story, that work gets quotation marks around it. If it's a long work, like a book, any containing work where you found the original source, that gets quotation, uh, that gets, sorry, italics. Uh, control I is the easiest way to make italics happen for you. Okay, also remember that a, the name of a database is also considered a title. So make sure you italicize the names of the databases. Okay, so look through your entire listings. Make sure that your short works are marked with quotation marks and your long works and databases are marked with italics. And that's about it for the works cited page. I hope that helps and contact me with any questions. I'm always happy to help.